Hi, how you doing? Justin here. Today I'm going to show you how to change strings on your acoustic guitar. Now it's nothing to be scared of. A lot of uh, beginner guitar players get a bit worried about changing strings. There's not really too much that can go wrong so long as you follow my instructions fairly carefully. And even if you don't, it's unlikely that you're going to damage anything. So uh, first thing actually before we start the string change, a lot of people ask when do you change strings? So uh, obviously if you break a string you're going to need to change that. But generally on acoustic guitar particularly, if I break one string I'll tend to change all of them just because they new strings sound a little bit crisper. So I tend to change all of them at the same time, which is what I'm going to do today. Um, normally you can tell if they're a little bit rusty. Uh, I use the, my fingernail, I just run my fingernail underneath the string. And uh, when I finish looking down there, if I look at my fingernail and there's like black grit or dirt in there, then I normally change it. You can normally hear it as well because they sound, start to sound a little bit dead. Sometimes you have a few tuning problems. So generally on acoustic guitar, I recommend that you change them all at the same time if you're going to. So uh, the first thing we need to do is we need to loosen off the strings to remove the, the old ones. Now uh, I'd really recommend that you get one of these little string winder cutters, okay? Otherwise you're going to need some sort of wire cutter to cut the strings. These ones that have got a string winder which uh, simply just go on the peg and you can turn it it's just a lot faster for um, you know getting the strings on and off. Um, so I do recommend that you get one of those. You don't have to but it uh, makes it easier. So the first thing that you want to do is loosen off all the strings. Okay so uh, you're just going to be turning the pegs in a clockwise direction. You don't have to loosen them right off just so they're not at full tension otherwise uh, when you cut the strings they might pop off a little bit weird. So uh, that's the first thing that you want to do is just get all of those strings nice and loose. Again, with it, you know, using the string winder makes it so much faster than uh, doing it by hand. That's why I think they're quite good value, you know. So we've got the strings nice and loose now, so they're just kind of floppy on it. Now what I do is I tend to, I use the cutter and I cut them at about the 12th fret. It doesn't really matter where you cut them, of course, uh, but I tend to go around the 12th fret so the strings are roughly the same length. On, on each side of that. So next thing you want to do is take them all off the headstock. So uh, if you've done it properly you'll have a few winds on each string so you have to just uh, unwind them to get them off and then pull them through. Again it's not particularly difficult um, but just be careful you don't want them flying off and hitting you in the face that's for certain because uh, they're sharp little metal things. Um, now this end, acoustic guitar generally has pins holding the strings into the guitar. Uh, and again, with these little uh, string winder things, they've usually got a little cutout on the, on the back end there, which fits underneath the pin and enables you to pull the pin out straight away. Okay, so uh, another good reason for doing that. If they get stuck, you may well have to use pliers to pull the, the uh, pins out, but uh, hopefully not. It doesn't happen too often, but just uh, you tuck that little groove underneath the pin, pull the pin out. So I'd recommend again, take out all the pins, one at a time. There we go, that's the pins out. And then once they're out, you should find that the rest of the string just pulls out the, the end, the part with the ball end on it. Okay, so now that the strings are off, normally what I do at this point is I give the uh, guitar a little bit of a clean. Okay, now I use a, a lemon oil, usually on the fingerboard. So you don't, again, you definitely don't have to do this, but uh, I find, well, you know, most of you will probably find that the neck gets quite dirty, if you, especially if you're not changing your strings that often. And uh, while some people like to have a, a dirty guitar or aren't too bothered about it, I, I generally like to keep the fingerboard clean. Even on old vintage guitars and stuff, I, I tend, it's the one part that I tend to make sure that I keep clean. Now let's put the lemon oil on, and give it a little bit of a polish, uh, clean off any of the muck. Again, finger gunk doesn't really affect the the sound or the playability that much but I just don't like it to be getting too dirty. Um, and while I'm just finishing doing this, a couple of other questions that I get all the time about string gauges. Um, now on, on this, for this particular uh, lesson today I'm using 12 to 56 gauge strings, which is a medium kind of gauge. Uh, I use different gauges on different guitars but you will find that it makes a massive difference to how easy the guitar is to play. And 12s are, on th this guitar I tend to be uh, this is kind of like a strumming kind of guitar. I don't do stuff too technical on it. Uh, so I tend to use thicker strings like these 12s, but on uh, other guitars where I'm doing fancier stuff, I tend to use lighter strings like it normally an 11 gauge. Let's give it a little thing, 
bit of a clean under here. Now, also, uh, you might have just heard there, the, uh, the little bridge uh, saddle there fell out. Um, it's not uncommon for them to come out when you're changing strings, so don't be worried if, it, uh, if, uh, if that happens, but try and get it in the right way. Um, if it's fallen out and you didn't know, you might be in trouble. So uh, I can tell from the, the look of it myself, but if you, you might want to just put a little pencil mark on the top so you know uh, which end it went in. That uh, wouldn't be a bad little tip. So neck is nice and clean. I've given it, actually I forgot to give the little headstock a wipe as well. Okay, so now we've got to get our new strings out. So uh, I'm using these Diodario uh, EXP19 strings today, uh, which are coated strings. Now coated strings have got like a kind of a Teflon-y kind of thing going on. And uh, that Teflon helps stop all of the, the, the grit and the oil from your fingers getting into the strings and deadening them. Um, so the, the strings tend to last longer if they're coated, but for my ear they sound, tend to sound a little bit deader. So, uh, you know, it's just a debate between uh, how bright you want your strings and how, whether you want them to last for a long time or not. So uh, now I've got the strings out. Now, Daddario have this clever thing of different coloured ball ends, so you know which string goes where. So if you have a look on the, on the back of the packet, it tells you what colour is where. So for this one, the brass one is the thicker string. So I'm going to just start off with that one. Do be careful while you're unwinding them as well. Just uh, You don't want them kind of flying out and hitting you in the eye. So uh, the one thing that I recommend that you do at this point is to put a little kink in the string. You'll usually find it's, it's kind of a bit thicker. And I just put a little kind of L-shaped bend in the string. And the reason for that is it just helps secure the string against the, the, the string pin. So the string pins aren't normally in an order. You don't have to have a particular one. They, they go in back in in any order. So I've kinked the string already. I'm going to put it in the hole. And then I'm going to put the pin in the hole. And then I'm going to put, put pressure down on the pin with my thumb and pull the string through. Okay, And you should feel like a nice positive connection there. Okay. Sometimes the pins wobble out a little bit as you're tuning, so you need to keep an eye on that and keep making sure that they press in. Um, now at this point, I'm going to put all of the, uh, the strings in before we start uh, actually doing the business up the other end. Um, but again, it's just really important that you get a, a solid connection there with the, uh, with the strings. Okay, what do we got? The fourth is the black one. Okay, so again, kink the string first, put it in the hole, Put the pin in with the groove facing the neck, and then pull it up. Okay, kink the string, put it in the hole, put the pin in, hold the pin down, and give the string a little bit of a, a yank through. Okay, you don't need to be too violent with it, but you know, give it a good solid kind of a, a plug. Okay, purple is the B string, and there's the E string as well. So we get the B string in, plop it in the hole, put the pin in, pull it through. And the last one, I've got the kink already, put the pin in and pull it through. Okay, so now we're more or less sorted there. Like I said, sometimes when you're tuning, you'll find that the pins start to pull out a little bit. doesn't really matter, just push it back in, okay? It will start to grip itself. Now, what I normally do, the way I'd normally do it, I'm going to do it slightly different because I'm just show, I want to show you a close-up of the headstock. I'm going to do the first string in this wide, and then I'll do the second string with a close-up. I normally put the strings like that through my legs, so I've got them there, and I lean the guitar up against my legs. So I've, I've, I've got easy access to what I'm looking at here. It's nice and close. Some people prefer to do it with the guitar laying flat on a table. Uh, it's really up to you. It doesn't make a big deal of difference, I guess. Um, so now I've got the string. And like I said, I'll do a close-up for you in a second. So normally I get the string so the hole is pointing up away from the guitar. I feed the string through, and I pull it so it's pretty much all of the way through. Then I grab the string, and I pull some slack through, okay? And how much slack you pull through, it's kind of a little bit of experience. I'm going to show you roughly how much I'm pulling through for each of the strings, but, um, you know, a couple of inches, I guess, five centimeters-ish. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap the string around the top, of the peg, and then I'm going to hold it close onto the, the guitar. And you can see now I've created this little lever to create tension. So I've got my first finger pressing the string down on the neck, and I'm using my second finger to keep a little bit of tension on the string. Just helps it go on easier. And we want all of the future windings to go under the slack part, the dead part of the string. Okay. And again, this is where string winder comes really in handy, because now I can just keep that tension on, wind it on, making sure that the string, the live string, okay, which is the part that we're going to play on, is going underneath the slack each time. Okay. It's a really big deal that it's, it's important because it kind of locks the string in. Okay. You're not going to damage anything if you don't do it that way, but it just helps keep the string in the right place 
and keep it in tune. So then when it starts to get enough tension, I've just put it in the right part of the, uh, of the nut there. Now already I can see down there that the pin is starting to push out, so I'm just going to push that back in again. There we go. You're not trying to get it in tune yet, I'm just adding some tension to it, okay? And then normally straight away at this point, before I start doing anything else, I cut the, the slack of the string off, and normally I leave just like maybe a centimeter. I don't like having the strings kind of laying out all over the place. Some people, again, like doing it that way. It doesn't really matter. Okay, let's go, excuse me, let's go to a close-up, and I'll show you that uh, putting the string on with a close-up. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn the tuning peg around so that the hole is facing directly up. Okay, then I'm going to feed the string through the hole and pull it all of the way through. Okay, so we've got there, you can see the string is going straight through the hole. Now I'm going to drag, grab the string here, and I'm going to pull through about five centimeters of slack. Okay, it doesn't have to be a whole lot, but roughly that amount I rec would recommend uh, for a start. You might want a little bit more than that for the thinner strings. Okay, now I'm going to wrap the string around, the live part. Okay, so I've got the, the slack at the top and the live part of the string at the bottom. The first thing I'm going to do is wrap the string around the top of the peg, okay? And you can see now my thumb is holding that string right down, okay? It's really important. Again, you could use your first finger there if you wanted to hold that string down. Now what's gonna happen, as we turn the string, the, sl the live part of the string is going underneath the dead part, okay? So here's the dead part of the string now coming around, and you'll see that it's now going the live part is going underneath. Okay, again, there's the, the dead part of the string, here's the live part of the string going underneath. And what that does is creates a little bit of a lock between the top wrap, which was the first one we did, and the live string, which is underneath. And we just keep turning that around. Again, a lot quicker with the winder, but this isn't all about speed right now. And you can see now we're getting a few nice little wraps around there, which is all good. Just keep holding that string nice and low. Okay, as it gets tight enough, make sure you keep an eye on the bridge pins. And there we have the string is through. Of course, it's a good idea to give it a little bit of a snip. So like I said, about a centimetre through, cut it, and that's your string on. Okay, let's do one more as well. So first thing, let's... Uh, Turn the peg around so the hole is pointing directly up. Feed the string through the hole. Okay, pull it all of the way through. Grab it near the peg, pull it back so you've got five centimeters, maybe a little bit more for the thinner strings. Okay, then again, now this time we're going to wrap it around counterclockwise because we want the string coming inside of the peg. Okay, so we've wrapped it around over. So at this point that the, the live string, the actual part that we're going to play has gone over the dead part. Okay, that's a really big deal. Now again, we're going to be turning the peg around. Okay, just get that dead part out of the way. Again, I'm trying to keep a bit of tension on the string. You can see that I'm using my thumb this time, but I'm just trying to keep it really low. And now the live part is going underneath. So here's the dead part of the string, and that is above. Okay, it's going uh, yeah, the, the dead part is going above the live part of the string. And again, we just keep on holding that string down so that all of the winds will kind of feed up underneath and help lock that string on, okay? Just keep on winding. Okay, it takes a little bit longer. Again, we're not in a particularly big hurry. Right, here we go. Just keep on winding. You're trying to keep the tension on if you can. You can't really see it now, but I'm doing this in a guitar stand, which is also not a bad way of doing it. Just popping it in a guitar stand while you're changing the string. A bit easier for me doing it sitting down, but it doesn't really make any difference. Okay. I'll just put that in the wrong one. There we go. That's better. Again, watching out for the peg. It's just popped out a little bit. Keep winding a little bit. Once you've got a bit of tension on, snip off that excess string, and we're good to go. 
So once all your strings are on, it's time to try and get it roughly in tune. Okay, so we're not after getting it exactly in tune yet because we still need to stretch it. So uh, just use your tuner and get it so it's the right note, but don't be too fussy about uh, you know, getting it exactly, exactly in tune. Do keep an eye on the pins. If they start to pull out, just uh, you know, push them back in. Okay, so now it's roughly in tune. It's not going to sound nice because I've only just done it very roughly because a really big important part of putting strings on is stretching them in before you play them. And if you don't do this, you're always going to get your guitar going out of tune for quite some time after you've put new strings on. So what you want to do is put your hand wrapping all around all of the strings on this side and then you just want to grab the string and give it a little bit of a pull. Okay, so I'm using the heel of my hand on the string here and then I'm pulling up with my first finger and my thumb. I'm giving it a really good stretch in, okay? You really want to give it a, a, a pretty good solid yank there, right? I'm, you know, you would be able to break them if you if you really pulled too hard, uh, you'd, you'd pr probably snap one. Um, and on the thinner strings, you need to be a little bit more gentle. Um, but it makes a, such a big difference, the tuning. You're gonna notice how much I have to tune after doing this again, just being a bit careful with the thinner string. I'm going to tune it again now, so that was down more than a tone. That one was also down more than a tone, just from one stretch in, and I'll probably do it a, a couple of times normally. Most of the slack gets pulled through the first time. Okay, so we're back in tune now. I'm going to go through and just give it one more little stretch in. Sometimes I tend to give the guitar a bit of a thrash before I, especially if I'm recording or doing a gig where it's really important the guitar doesn't go out of tune. I still lost a, nearly a semi-turn there. I think that should be mostly stretched in. So now I'm going to worry about getting a little bit more in tune. E and the B string hardly moved at all. And, uh, yeah. Still needs a little bit of tweaking. So don't be too disappointed if your guitar goes out of tune a little bit when you first put new strings on. It does take a little while for them to kind of settle in a little bit. But again, do, making sure that you give it a good stretch should sort out most of the problem and it should only require a little bit of tweaking. So uh, I hope that gives you the confidence to change your own strings and I'll see you for plenty more lessons very soon. You take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.